here tonight for our inner circle launch of the book. Um, and I'm sure maybe one or two of you feel a little bit like our nanny did when she came to me after finding an article in a magazine about Justin. <coughs> she said, is this Mr. Hill? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it is. And she said, he's written books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has. Five or six, I think you've trapped with like the children. <laughs>
the wooden benches drawn close, cloaks and hoods pulled tight to their chests. Their round boss shields hung in the hall shadows, their spears were sheathed, their swords kept a hand like favourite hounds. The midwinter days were short and dark, thin shadows stretched long on the ground. No one spoke. It was bad business these days in Dublin. The slave markets were still busy, but day by day rumour grew with the size of Brian Borrow's war host. War was coming, like a mounted horseman, a blood-red horse, the Lord's Book said, hell and judgment following after. The seagulls sensed it, that distant scent of battle. They fought and cawed in chaotic multitudes, swooped low of the small fishing boats, plucked cold, flapping fish from the slate grey waters. The dull winter day was cold and bleak and grey. Wolfenoth stood at the quayside and looked out towards the estuary. He watched the masts, the masts of approaching warships appear among the riverside trees, the rain unceasing as it stripped the boughs, wet leaves plastered along the smooth river water. Dublin shivered. I mean, sorry, Wolfenoth shivered. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the Queen at that time. <laughs> <laughs> How funny we're having a reading about Dublin when the Queen's on that time. Yeah. Anyway, so. <laughs> You should never let your mind wander when doing a reading. <laughs> That's my first lesson for today. Wolf not shivered, despite his blue cloak and hood, the shaggy lining beginning to wear thin. The silver brooch held the wool cloth close to his chest. The disc patterned with three swirling hounds. The midwinter days were short and the afternoon light was already beginning to fail. The hounds' blue glass eyes were dull, one eye setting blind and empty. Wolfnoth stood as still as an ancient oak, gnarled and hollowed by too many winters, staring eastwards over the waves. His thoughts were far away from this muddy dockside in the shadow of the high Dublin earthworks, topped with a wall of split timbers. They crossed the grey and restless waves, made their way back to the fields of his youth, to his hall's hearthside, where warm and gentle hands welcomed his return. When there was good food on the table, and warm-hearted words, when music and laughter rose like Abbey plain chant, when he slept without cares and the home rafters and a heavy thatch. Brian will not dare come back, an Orkney man from his accent shouted at the sight of the new boat crews, and Wolfnoth snorted. You're a fool or a wishful thinker, he called out over the men's heads. A few bystanders laughed. Brian's emptied my monster and Connors and also fighting men. He does not fear you spear danes. Some men voiced agreement. Few doubted tales that Brian Borrow, Emperor of the Gales, High King of the Irish, was gathering his men for battle. But the Orkney man heard the English accent and Wolfmoth's voice and laughed. What is it to you, Greybeard? Go back home if you still have one. When Brian is dead, we will come and use you as a woman every third night. Wolfmoth paused and the strange about him grinned, hoping for a scrap. He had killed for less, but now he was wiser and more assured. His look stopped the laughter. He held it long, spat into the black mud, walked slowly away, his hand tight on his sword hilt, as the taunts grew more distant. Thank you. I should, um, I should just mention, um, Dimmick's very kindly have come to sell books. Um, <laughs> but um, for anyone who wants to hear me talk more um, about the book or read a bit more, there's an event on the 15th of June, um, which Dimmick's talking at the Grappa Bar, um, which I hope um, you know, some of you, many of you will, will come along to as well. Um, and we can, have, we can do another celebration. Um, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.